Good afternoon, everyone. It is um, Thursday, September 15th, and this is the City of Rehoboth Treats, uh, Streets and Transportation Committee meeting. Um, I, it's 2 o'clock, and I call this meeting to order. I'm going to do a roll call vote uh, <laughs> attendance. Um, <laughs> David uh, Diefendor. Present. Elise Moore. Present. Donna Mayberry. Present. Uh, David Mann is absent. John Geiger is absent. The chair is present. We have a quorum and can conduct business. First on the agenda is approval of minutes from the August 18th, 2022 meeting. I believe uh, these were sent out in advance. Does anyone have any questions, comments, revisions? No? I'll accept a motion. To approve? Motion to approve. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the meeting minutes from August 18, 2022. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And the approval of minutes carries. Um, I've got no correspondence identified. Um, I would like to um, just a few updates uh, from myself. We, um, one thing that I've asked my other committee, um, the Environment Committee, which kind of interconnects, uh, and a lot of it is educational uh, with different groups, I've asked that at the next meeting we will appoint liaisons um, with uh, committee members to liaise with other organizations and committees. Um, so I'd like all of you to consider whether that makes sense for this committee too. Um, there might be some other city committees that um, that we often um, have some similarities to or committees that may also want to weigh in on our topic. So I'd ask you to think about that um, for the next meeting. Um, first on the agenda is an update on committee recommendations uh, to the Board of Commissioners related to the sidewalk and curb project at Columbia and Grove Street. Um, as you may recall, uh, we went back to DelDOT, asked if the sidewalk was necessary. Um, they said it was not. The, so the mayor and commissioners have asked that we proceed with that project uh, without a crosswalk and without the sidewalk, maintaining those two parking spots on Columbia Avenue as well as the trees. Um, so that is currently being, um, they're finalizing the design of that. Um, so that's where that stands. Uh, probably wouldn't happen until the the next budget year, so sometime after April um, of 2023. Uh, next update, and I don't have an update, is update and discuss related um, and discussion related to the committee recommendations uh, for the 300 block of Munson Street. Uh, the mayor and commissioners, besides me giving a brief overview, uh, we've not gone into any um, deep discussion. So at this point, there's, there's no update. Um, and with that, uh, C on old business is discussion on parking and unloading of delivery vehicles and impact on traffic flow, along with uh, a presentation on the zoning, the loading zones citywide. Um, just a, a brief recap. Uh, Donna, you brought this up is, is something for us to talk about it. Um, David graciously uh, volunteered to go out and document all of those loading zones, um, which he has which he has done. Um, and I think you were also going to have some conversations with the chamber or Main Street about this idea in general. Have have you were you able no, to I, do that? No, I delayed those meetings, waiting to get this information okay. and also to get more of a feel from the commissioners whether they want to do that. Okay. Um, comprehensive review by professionals. So I thought, so I've not gone further on the meeting. Okay, great. Um, Dave, you want to take it away? Uh, okay, so what I, had, what I had done is I agreed to go out and uh, take pictures of all the loading zones based upon <clears throat> the zones that are listed in the code. 
So if you just see the, the first slide here, I kind of wrapped it up, and then I have a picture of each loading zone, which I don't think we have to go into detail, but I, we can go through it quickly. So the, the bluff, in other words, the bottom line up front, is um, this, there's a lot of, of those parking zones, the, the loading zones in the, um, in the code still reference parking meters. So um, it, I would think the code needs to be updated because the parking meters are no longer there. It talks about spot A, uh, 7A, whatever. Well, that spot I don't think is there now because you can park in the, in the various zones. And two of the loading zones I, I couldn't find. Um, they, they didn't exist as far as I was concerned. It's the, uh, and I can show that as I roll through the pictures. Uh, they had been either uh, moved, marked over, or, or don't, don't exist. One's on First Street out, outside of the, um, I can't remember the name of the hotel, and the other one is right near the Rehoboth Running Company. Neither one of those um, I could find. Um, and then, so basically two of the, two of the zones at the bandstand um, they're not listed in the code. Uh, they're the ones that, um, that are right next to, on each side of the bandstand going east and west. And as the chief had stated, the loading zone up by Rehoboth Avenue is, is really a jolly trolley stop. I don't think I found the sign for loading zone up there. Uh, there's one on each side of it, one in front of the ice cream store and one on the north side uh, near the old Dolly's place. Um, so most of the loading zones on Rehoboth Avenue are perpendicular to the roadway. It's, they're basically the size for a van, a car, or a small box truck, excluding the two zones um, that are out there by the bandstand that I talked about. And I just, this is just a, a swag here of the, um, the amount. If we talked about, say we wanted to put a couple of the loading zones that could accommodate a larger vehicle, one that delivers food, beer, et cetera, a, a Cisco truck, basically. Uh, they take approximately seven or eight spots. Um, the, the, they, would, they would take approximately seven or eight spots um, that currently exist as a parking spot in order for that truck to get in and get out of there and be completely out of the roadway. And if you just, if you just run the, the, the very last point there, if it's um, the maximum lost revenue would, you know, could exceed $30,000 per, would be $30,000 per loading zone if you wanted to take seven or eight spots. If you wanted to make some smaller spots for an ups truck or something else, it would be less. It would be scaled down to maybe four to five spots. So I just took a maximum that the zone was being used the entire day. Okay. Um, so, and that's kind of where I stand. Other than, other than that, I just went through and I took pictures of every, every one of the zones. I, I don't know whether you want to go through every one of these, but you know, if you can, you can uh, just kind of roll through. There, okay, so there's up there where the Jolly Trolley is. Um, and the chief, it's previously stated, like I said, that's mostly for, um, he needs the uh, Jolly Trolley to park there and some cars were unloading, as you can see. Um, yep, that's spot Z. Okay, and here, here's the one on um, First Street, uh, Second Street, I'm sorry, I said First Street earlier, apologize. That the hotel. By the ocean, Oceanus. Yeah. Uh, Belmore's on the on the very end. Oceanus is on the right there. That spot, it says the code says there's a spot there, but there, there's clearly no spot because it's in the middle of the, the driving lane. And that's by the Bellevue there. Uh, yeah. And here's the one on Fourth Street, which is right outside of the Rehoboth Running Company. It appears that that was a loading zone at one point in time. You could almost see that. It had it marked and it was painted over, but it's clearly a spot now. As you can see, a car's parked in there. And when you say there are any painted red, or is, are the loading zones painted in yellow? No, they're not. There's no red. They all have a sign there, and they're basically a, a parking spot. Okay, but they don't. Not, but the the painting around it are just the, the typical paintings for the street. For the street, right. Yeah. So it's just a sign that denotes it's a parking or Correct. a loading zone. And, and I don't know, I'd have to get the, the street listing, the, the marking, the street marking designators out to see if it appropriately is red. I'm not sure that's the case or not, though. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the loading zone should be red. I, that would have to be just researched some more, that's all. Hmm. So that's, that's basically the presentation, and that's kind of what I, was, what I agreed I would do. Did you do a lot of work? Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, David. Um, I'm not sure where that brings us. <laughs> um, 
I guess it just shows you that, that currently larger trucks have no place to pull in and park. They're, they can't be accommodated unloading, and that's why they park in the um, driving lane except up where the uh, bandstand is. Mm -hmm. they're, they're stopping in the loading zone. And you're, they're and stopping you're, the street. And Dave, are you saying like with the, t the two loading zones where larger tr the largest trucks can park uh, exist uh, plus the parking area for the Jolly Trolley? Correct. Those are the ones. Okay, so the Jolly owned. Trolley parking doesn't uh, uh, rule out a second large space. The, there's the, there's one on the the south side of Rehoboth Avenue and the north side of Rehoboth Avenue, they're, and they're right by the bandstand, and they're marked commercial loading zone only. And the one by the trolley Jolly Trolley, I don't believe, has a loading zone sign. There's one on the on the south side and the north side by Dolly's and um, the ice cream store on the south side, but it's just, it just accommodates a, um, a van or something pulling in there. Mm -hmm. but so, so in the code, it specifies that second large space there along Rehoboth Avenue and the boardwalk, but it's not noted in a sign. Uh, yeah, I didn't see okay. a sign. And there's, right. all right. So, so two aren't listed in the code, but there are two additional ones. So it still comes down the same number of spaces. We, you we said lost, two aren't, don't exist. Right, we lost two, and then uh, the added two, right. Two, so it's about the same, so it's, it is the same number. And then when you, when you look at this, talk about what you need for large Cisco size trucks, and you say seven to eight spaces, is that, the spaces that go parallel to the sidewalk, or are those the vertical spots? You would lose seven ver vertical spots. Those would be the, the spots that are on Rehoboth Avenue that are, that are perpendicular to the driving lane, not, not, the, not the horizontal ones. Okay. Right. So, so you lose seven of those pull-in spots. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Well, I think there's a lot of information to absorb. That's how I feel looking at this, or... Um, I uh, well, let me let me address a couple of things you mentioned, um, Dave. One inconsistencies um, in the code, and I think we're referencing meters, which we don't have anymore. Uh, we currently have a consultant that is reviewing the code for those types of things um, to make um, to make code wide uh, corrections. Um, th the other thing is I, this. I, although I'm very glad you documented it and we identified a few things that weren't there and should have been there. Um, but it doesn't tell me anything that we didn't already know. Um, and that is we've got a, you know, a, a few, probably an adequate number of loading zones for cars, vehicles to pull in for whatever reasons, but it does not solve deliveries. Um, it does not solve the problem of delivery trucks blocking the roadways. Um, so one thing that I, I, I'm going to bring this up a little bit later, but in this context, one thing that we are, the mayor and commissioners are looking at are parking issues. Um, and I think there is agreement among the commissioners that a citywide parking study needs to happen by a expert. Um, the city staff right now, um, and I think we're utilizing, we might be utilizing a consulting company, um, is to identify all of the parking spots within the city. Um, each zone, how many spots, how many handicapped spots, um, et cetera. Um, and I think that information will help a parking um, study to to occur to look at the adequacy of it. Maybe there is an opportunity for a parking garage. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but would I would hope we can tack, tackle onto that is a traffic study um, because we keep asking. Um, we've made recommendations in the past, and this one thing that kept 
kept being said was, well, we want something comprehensive. Don't piecemeal all of these changes. Well, I don't know how we can make recommendations other than piecemealing them unless we have a comprehensive study done. Um, so uh, I, I'm not sure where to take this topic without experts looking at it holistically and coming back to us and giving us recommendations. Right. Well I, well, I think, you know, when we talk about these delivery truck loading zones, that's more to do with parking than traffic per se. It, we're really looking at having parking spaces for large delivery vehicles. So that all folds in together. And I mean, they, there are those many loading zones or parking zones for uh, vehicles, that, uh, delivery vehicles as it is. So that, I think that does fold into the parking issue. And so, I mean, I would recommend if the city wants to do a comprehensive study on parking, they should include this, the parking for delivery vehicles, and that uh, that, that needs to be updated and expanded. And um, so I, um, I would, I mean, I would, I would recommend that we add this topic to that. They could address, that, that comprehensive committee could address both issues. Any members of the public? Walter, while you're coming up, I, I failed to mention, I just want to thank Chief Banks, uh, city staff for being here, as well as uh, Ann Womack, city secretary here, keeping us on track. Watch out, Walter, she left the gavel here, so. <laughs> thank you, Stan. <laughs> Thank you, Stan. I'm only kidding, Walter. No, I'm not. Um, I think there's a question. Uh, Walter Burlingham, 123 Hemlopen Avenue. I think there's a lot of difference between standing and parking uh, for the delivery trucks, et cetera. If they pull into a parking space, I don't consider that long term. But I, I go to a different question. Um, you have a copy of, of the code. Does it say commercial loading zones? I don't because so. somewhere along the way, the, the city, no. in its capacity, in my opinion, and I have no chance, I, I just got too much going on. But now, the loading zones on Rehoboth Avenue, they all have commercial added underneath them. No. Hmm. So let me, let me uh, respond well, to that. So in in only two in the lo in the code section ninety two two thirty four it says loading zones designated. The, I believe the only two that are, that say commercial zones are the one north and south of the bandstand. Are they separately defined? Say again. Are they separately defined? In the code or in the in in the code or on the street. I'm asking in the code because if if not if you if they if the board wants them that way they should make them that way. They should make it legal. The two in the code that I referenced that, set, that talk about commercial are not in the code, the ones by the bandstand. They're not physically listed in the code. I'm just saying that <laughs> it's make it right. It's, well, make, that, it say, make it say what it does say. And that's and, why I brought it up in this. It states very, that they're not okay. in the code. I, I, could, I could not read that. But in any case, your points were well made. The other thing, um, it starts here. Um, David, what was so at some point you have to have input and expect it to go forward to the commissioners and get it taken care of, and only the mayor controls what gets that far um, for discussion. But if you're going to ask for some correction, um, we're waiting. If they're looking to have a study, it's a good time to do it in the winter when there's no cars here and everything else. It's just absolutely stupid. All this stuff should have been done in the summer when people could have seen how people park and what's going on. But there's a little clue in the middle of this. Um, these regulations, in most cases, in this particular one, only apply during the parking meter season. And I don't hear any one of you bringing that up. So they go away the rest of the year. And thanks to Donna, it's in the stuff that you gave us in the printing that it says it applies during the parking meter season. So if you're going to fix it, if you want to fix mm -hmm. it, fix it all at one time. Mm -hmm. So that could apply. Right, right. I. And then I, I go back. 
to one other thing, and I'd like to go back up, and Mr. Chairman, I don't think you intentionally skipped it. The Columbia Avenue thing has been pushed away and pushed away and pushed away, but um, we still have no pictures from the police department or from anybody in the city. That's not a dig, Chief. Um, about the sidewalk at Columbia Avenue, and the mayor made a statement that not if I have anything to do with it, will there be a crosswalk there at the sidewalk behind the old dairy store, uh, Row of Farms. Well, there's six more commissioners beside the, the mayor, and there is no pictures showing during the summer when the farmer's market is in its glee of all the people walking on Columbia Avenue. And there was a statement made, it, it was you, I'm not gonna say you, Ed, but I guess be, between the city manager and the mayor or whoever, they sent it back for redesign and it did not come back. It didn't come to the commissioners, somebody made a decision. But there's people walking in the street and when you come out of the farmer's market, you ought to be able to hit that crosswalk and go across and not be where people are coming down Columbia Avenue with people walking in the street and strollers and everything else. We have time for a police car down at the end of the street. If he wants to do that, that's fine but it ought to be a safe street because there's no policeman out there slowing people down. There is no variable message board and say farmer's market day, 15, 15 mile an hour speed limit. It needs to be made safe. And putting this in to effect, unless you have the police officers to be there and ticket the people and or tow it, you've done nothing because the, the drivers are just gonna park there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Walter, um, and I, I don't disagree with you, but I think if you were at some of the meetings, some of my colleagues are worried more about there being a water swell or swall um, than anything else. Say what? I, I, some, some water retaining area for, for stormwater drainage is... It's is, about safety. The stormwater can be accommodated easily. I, but what, when you're going to spend thirty-five thousand dollars to do it, twenty-eight or thirty-five thousand dollars, it ought to be done right, and the roadway ought to be wide enough there, so that the vehicles can come down and make the turning radius. And then on top of it, you still have the unsafe condition because the bushes are growing so high, you can't see what's going on around the intersection, and we still don't get that cleared. Thank you, Walter. Any other? I had a thought about the seven, eight spaces. You know, then there's the difficulty. That's those are those are all sort of diagonal. Yeah. And then getting in and out of those. You know, so sort of back to your point, getting in and out of them. Do you need another space to pull in? Also, in addition to the size, did you? I don't know if you took that into account or. Oh, the large trucks that I looked at. Yeah. took about five spaces up and so that they, they physically the length of it was five parking spaces where they were in the street so i i think it's a conservative estimate to say you need seven or eight because he has to pull I, I did in other words yes i did allow for pulling in eight pulling in but it, it could take nine i mean you know it depends right. upon the driver how good the driver is yeah. I mean, really. and back to your point another reason we need a professional person to yeah and uh, just to walter's point um if I, this will be a topic for the budget discussion, and I absolutely will not be in favor of doing either one of these studies if it does not include um, information and, and analysis done during our summer season. Um, so I just want to be clear about that. I think uh, getting back to the delivery uh, parking areas. I'm curious to have uh, the chief's response to what, what uh, Dave found as far as documenting the parking spaces that exist and how, how they're marked and things like that. Like what's your reaction or, or thoughts mm -hmm. about accommodating large trucks or overall what is or isn't marked? Or? I, I think he was spot on. Um, the code reads what the code is and we've known for a while now some of it's not documented correctly as this was brought up. As far as um, the two loading zones on each side of the bandstand area, um, again, it does say commercial now with that, that was added this year, but the, it was not added, fixed in the code, so that needs to get done, so he's spot on that. Again, I do not count um, 
as was mentioned too, a parking spots for a truck up at the top of the bandstand or in front of the, the restrooms because again, that's a, a mass transient drop off because at the front of the restrooms you have um, dart, so mm -hmm. that's their stop, and they need to curb the curb so people can step off safely to unload their passengers. Mm -hmm. And if you have a Cisco truck or a Coca Cola or whatever delivery truck sitting in front there, then they have to pull the dart bus out in the roadway, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're not doing it safely, dropping off at the curb. And you got the same thing up the boardwalk with Jolly Trolley, and that's why. We, we don't have enough personnel, but we try to keep a police officer somewhat near the area. So if we see people sitting there, we move them out as quickly as we can. If we see a dart bus or the jolly trolley coming down, because mm -hmm. otherwise we get a phone call saying people are in our spot, we can't pull up safely, or they have to pull up on a bad angle. So I don't count them as a viable um, area, <laughs> quite uh -huh. honestly, as long as those mass transient things, um, vehicles are moving up and down. Otherwise, it Does was that spot mean like on. two the two large spots there along the boardwalk? You don't count them as really parking spaces because there's so much mass transit. Or no, on or, the or, each or, end I do because it's but it's just for one vehicle. It's a vehicle space or a small um, box truck maybe to back in there. And that is not a place that Cisco can back in there. Yeah, if they yeah. do, they're way out past the area and they're in front of the fire hydrant. If we allow a Cisco truck or some something bigger to back into that spot, they're gonna be out far enough and there's fire hydrants there and I couldn't legally say that's okay to block the fire hydrants. Mm -hmm. Okay, well what, what, what I've observed around town, maybe you can address this too, is that there are a lot of intermediate sized delivery trucks. Absolutely. That, and that they're not the Cisco size, but they're certainly too big for any of the uh, car or regular van size. So, uh, and I think there are more of those intermediate sizes than there are of the Cisco size. Does that, you have a I, I don't, I don't necessarily would agree with that. There's a lot of those Cisco trucks when you walk on Rehoboth Avenue and Baltimore and um, Wilmington, they're large trucks. Yeah, is it the same truck that's going from block to block? No, they come from, depends upon what they're delivering. So there's basically what I've seen, and I'm not the expert, all right? I've seen two sizes of, of large, quote unquote, trucks. One, one are the, the tractor trailer trucks, and then there's the, the, some of the Cisco trucks seem to be a little smaller, maybe there's a medium size, around, mm -hmm. around 50 feet. We've, I've, we've mm -hmm. measured it by looking at the, the size of the um, parking spots. And then you'd have a smaller one, maybe like a UPS, a box truck, that, that's what I've mm -hmm. seen. I'm, I'm sure there's others. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think we might, you know, maybe we can't find so many spaces for the Cisco size trucks, but we might be able to create some more moderate intermediate sizes that could get a lot of the delivery trucks off the, out of uh, the lane of traffic, you know, that would help a lot. But, um, Ed, I think that, like you were, you were right on that if, you know, you want to recommend a study, it would be a parking study, a traffic study, and it would include parking and it would include delivery vehicles to see yep. what a professional thinks that they can do with it. I, for, for me, Donna, I mean, what you, just, what you just referenced is, okay, so let's say that the, you know, those medium size, I would say they, from, from my observation, it looks like they take, uh, at least just about two parking spots, which is what 18 plus 18, um, 36, yeah. Um, plus you probably need at least another parking spot length for them to turn in and turn out. That's three parking spots dedicated for a delivery vehicle at each one is 2,500 bucks a year in in revenue loss i i don't well i think that's why a professional could help yeah. estimate this cost you know i i think if some of the spaces were created not on rehoboth avenue but on the first and second street and that where they where the cars park parallel and that you taking those you know might that would take fewer spots uh or th there could be more spaces created in the alleyway um so i i i don't think Every spot would take that many. It have you know it have to be a judicious decision, but 
it just shows the, the uh, specificity of this and the complication of it. And so if the commissioners are going ahead with a comprehensive parking study, yeah, I really feel this should be folded in. Because if they do a comprehensive parking study and we come back and say, um, try to do something about uh, unloading delivery trucks or that they take up their parking in the travel lanes, then, and then we'd be just be trying to redo what the professionals have done. So I, I think it's a, an integrated problem, and I think we just ask the commissioners to fold it in. And, um, and, so I, and I think, I, well, and I think we have to look at it's not, you know, with the fire department sending a letter and being very concerned about how crit how dangerous it's becoming with all the delivery trucks parking in the travel lane. I mean, that I think that puts that much more impetus behind the commissioners doing something to improve the situation. And um, I mean, when I look at it, I just see delivery trucks parked in very dangerous areas around town. So I, I think what this, what this effort demonstrated is, and I think we can all agree, that for the tractor trailer size and medium size delivery vehicles, we do not have sufficient loading areas. And they are blocking travel lanes. Um, and I'm not sure. Do we want to continue the discussion at all or move on to a comprehensive? Um... Well, I, I think I'd like to maybe say we make a recommendation to the commissioners that they fold this issue into their parking study. And that with the comprehensive study they're looking for, they expand it to include parking for delivery vehicles uh, so that they are not impeding, they're not parking in travel lanes. Um, I mean, I think Don. we could take that as a, a committee. If we all okay. agree on that, I want to make that recommendation to the commission. Walter? Uh, Walter Birmingham, I'll keep it short. First of all, you're talking about next summer before you're going to get a comprehensive plan and another budget in another year. But one of the serious problems is in the first block when the tractor trailer, let's not use the word Cisco, but that's who it is, when they come around, they go up to the ocean or the turn across by the bathrooms and come down and they come up and park in the crosswalk, literally blocking the crosswalk. And um, his guys are, they got the whole city to watch out for. And it, it would be my suggestion, throw it up, that whether they're on a bicycle or a walking cadet, because Chief briefed this years ago about the fact that they're not all gonna be certified police officers anymore and the city had good warning to that, but they need to be not afraid to walk up and say, I'm sorry, sir, but you're going to have to put your ramp back on the truck and back it up and not block the crosswalk. That's danger. I, I don't buy your argument about the dollar sign at all, Ed. This is about what's dangerous. And I, you've heard me say, Leonard Tobacchi says, a Mitsubishi Samurai is a dangerous vehicle. It's like a Jeep. No, it's not dangerous until you put a driver in it. None of these vehicles are dangerous. The conditions are... There's people, there's just too many people downtown and people are jumping in and out without looking and that's got nothing to do with the people that are walking across the street mid-block and we're not gonna be able to stop that at all. And he needs the help and come budget time, um, that needs to be taken care of. Blocking the crosswalks is, is a real problem. And I, I think the fact that the city has raised the parking all around town by 33% per, this season, that their that tremendous revenue income increase, I think that revenue increase could go toward dealing with this problem of uh, delivery trucks parking in travel lanes. So I, I, I don't, I would think that revenue should, could be used for that. One last, one last item. This is not supposed to be limited to Rehoboth Avenue. We have FedEx, UPS trucks, they don't give a damn. They park on the roadway. They're told to park on the roadway and their companies say, we'll pay the fines, deliver the packages until their people can give a ticket to the driver. Because the truck didn't park itself there, give it to the driver and if they have a way, ticket the truck also because they can't tow the truck until it gets accumulated tickets. But Penlopen, Columbia, the people come in on Saturdays, Fridays and Saturdays to replace the dishwashers, et cetera, they park in the street. 
whether or not there's trees stopping them from getting off the shoulders. But then you have the lawn people, and they park out in the street. So when everybody's got to cross the center line, and you got all these bicycles, you got the trail coming up, you got the people with their little surreys, and that's before you get the people walking with their, riding their bikes or walking with their backpacks, a chair that they can't see around them. There needs to be some cadets out there telling these people, you walk facing traffic, and you need to stay out of the way. I, there's just so much going on and the city's not doing a good job at it, and they need to identify those problems. Thank you, Walter. Well, a quick question for the chief, because um, Walter just brought up a, a point about um, other service vehicles. Um, and I thought it, maybe four years ago now, um, the city made a concerted effort to, um, to stop having service trucks and landscape equipment parking, double parking or parking on the roadway and forcing everyone to have a, um, a park, a park, yeah, a permit um, to be actually physically parked in a spot. Was there a considered effort in enforcement with that? Has that there, tapered well, off? Well, when it first started a few years back, um, I, I think there was, hopefully it's still keeping up. Um, Again, I don't want to throw another department under the bus per, or set a because it's easy to say cadets or law enforcement. But a lot of things we're talking about, the crosswalks and stuff, actually falls under the parking division. But as far as parking too, we're there to supplement for that. So like in in the off streets, the side streets falls under parking with the permits. Mm -hmm. If it's that now, if we see a dangerous thing, absolutely, I want every officer riding. If they're a bike officer, if they're a foot officer, if they're on a patrol car to help out. And we expect the same thing from the parking division. It's a joint effort as we're going to, going around, so. Well, don't all the construction but, guys and the landscapers have to have parking permits? That's what I'm saying, and, 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 and the, parking the parking division people. deals with the permit section, not the police department. So that's why I was saying, I don't want to throw anything under because it's a joint effort, but. But they would be the checking if there's kind of be. Uh, the chair's question was, yes, they're supposed to be sitting there checking. That's not something normally a police officer would check. Right. Do you have any data from parking or idea if those they, they would be checking those kind of service vehicles for parking permits too, right? I, I'm sure they are. I don't have any data. We could we could um, ask the supervisor to come into one of the meetings. Yeah. Well, I have one other thought here before. We, would um, just dawned on me. Would it be helpful or would we, to tweak it a little bit? Like if all these would it as an intermediate step. Would it help with all these zones that have been identified? If they were painted and marked more uh, um, obviously, and if we had a handout to give to delivery people to use these spots, like we had talked about that at one time, like what, do any delivery people realize these spots exist? And like if we just made them more obvious and educated delivery people and shop owners, would that help some? Would that be something to do before a comprehensive study's done? Well, the only thing I'd say on that is, um, and I'm sorry I didn't send this to you earlier so you could look at it. If you, when you go through it, most of these spots are only big enough for a van or a car to pull in. You can't get any uh, anything larger in there unless it's parallel to the roadway. There's several of them that are parallel to the roadway. So I don't, I, in my personal opinion, you can paint it all you want. If that vehicle can't get in there, he's not going in there. Okay. Well, I'm wondering about, you know, FedEx or some of those smaller delivery things that they could do it, you know, or, or we just educate yeah. and try to get yeah. people to use those spots and uh, not so just readily park in the travel lane. If I may, um, Please. you said during, during the summer months, um, I was um, out and about all the time walking, driving around. The reality is, and it's going to make some people mad by my statement, but a lot of the business owners themselves are taking it up. Um, you take Candy Kitchen, almost everyone in their spots near their stores mm -hmm. up the avenue, and that second block is filled up with their trucks at different times for a majority of the day. And I'm not saying they're not working, delivering back and forth between the stores, but so the, in fairness to UPS and some other ones, they're, they're riding around and they're on a time frame, and they're, they're not going to go back around two or three laps. They're going to see it and pull uh -huh. in, or they're going to move. Um, for that. Uh, so a lot of them are filled up with businesses that have dual businesses in, in the town or just outside of town back and forth. 
mm-hmm. and, and we see that constantly. So th- there is a lot of turnover in those spots, but a lot of times it's from their own business people running in and out. And how the code s- specifies, um, it's, it's making a delivery drop off. And in fairness to They're the parking or the police or anybody else going by, um, we don't know if it's for their business or not, or somebody run in to pick an item up they just purchased. <laughs> And all because again, all they have to do is come out with a box or bring a box back and say we were making the delivery and mm. okay, <laughs> and move on. So I agree. If it was painted and all that, I, I don't know how much it would help. I will tell you that I think all the businesses that deliver in town know where the parking spaces are. They've been doing it long enough. It's their job to know. I think they're just they do what they have to do. If they happen to go buy one, and it's opportunity. They'll pull in. If not, and that's the store they need to make the delivery, that's the store they're stopping at. They're stopping in the street. And, and it's all about a time crunch. Mm-hmm. Right, you think right they know wrong, about I'm these? Just, you think you know, they know about these loading, these designated loadings? I think so. they're familiar with Absolutely. each town and their ordinances and how much is enforced or not enforced and where parking is available at. I, that, that's their job to know and where they can make time up. Well, then I, my question would be to you. Do you think there's any way we can do anything to help the situation while a comprehensive study is going on? I, I don't, the, the true answer is probably no, because I think no decisions will be made without a comprehensive plan study, because I think at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to a time frame. At, at the end of the day, time, as far as what time deliveries can take place to help out, if it's not in weekends and I don't, that's not good for businesses. I certainly can appreciate that, but our town in a lot of aspects was never designed for all the events and uh, things that we have and road closures and, and stuff um, through the summertime. So you so, lean you, you lean toward having a time limit on certain I, things? I, well, I don't know that until I see the comprehensive plan. I'm just saying I think that's going to have to play a role Sorry in about it. That, guys. It may have to play a role in it, and until we have information I don't think you're going to find a group of commissioners. I don't want to speak for them to make a decision without having some data and input is what I believe. I know I wouldn't make a decision without all information. Mm-hmm. We, we've been told before that they don't want, do not piecemeal stuff. Right. They couldn't even get a no left turn on Robeth Avenue. Right. Well, I think the best we can do is just encourage that this topic be folded in with a comprehensive parking study. Any other comments from the public? Um, hold on. Better. Carolyn Diefendorfer, city resident. I went around when he was taking a lot of the pictures. The majority of the spots are no bigger than a car. A UPS truck is not going to be able to pull into those spots because it's wider than a car. So I think the majority of the spots are pedestrian loading and unloading only. Typical. Uh, thank you, Carolyn. Um, with that, I, I'm going to move on to the next topic, which we've, we've talked a lot about, which is a comprehensive traffic parking safety plan um, for the, the city. Um, so it sounds like everyone here is in agreement. We need that to be able to make recommendations um, do we want to formalize that in, in writing? Um, would you prefer that I just articulate that in conversations with the mayor and commissioners? Um, or do we want to? Well, what's the best way to, to yeah, going you? forth? I mean, I, I, you know, I, think, I think we're all in concurrence that we would we would be in favor of us traffic. I, I, I think it would always be best to <clears throat> formalize it with a rationale. Hmm. Um, if someone would like to volunteer to to write that. Yeah, well, I, I I agree. I think it would be better that we make a formal statement that can be taken to the commissioners as a, a committee. We recommend this. Right, because they basically anything you bring forth, they, you want to that report format. You want to put something in there so they can look at. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's what we should do if we want to move mm-hmm. forward. I'll do it. Would you? Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, I would also. Um, I think that we we had the pleasure of having Chris Galanti. Um, who is an in, in expert in, in professionally in this area 
um, I'm sure that he would be willing to help um, should we need it, um, and I may give you his contact information, okay. at least. Okay, uh, new business, um, it, and it's probably old business because we have talked about it before, but discussion of the bicycle safety brochure map and the city's parking and walking guide. I was hoping that instead of spending time talking about this, a volunteer on this committee would take a look at both of those bro brochures and see how they could, to make any recommendations on whether adding the two together or anything that's currently missing from the from either brochure. Um, I think this is something, Donna, that you brought up in the in the past when we have first originally were looking at the bicycle safety brochure. Mm -hmm. I guess my feeling on this was that we could make a recommendation to the city who, the staff on the city who put that together that they integrate it. I think they do a better job and that they could, do, I don't, I don't, I didn't, I don't feel that any one on that. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't suggest that we would, we would integrate, but we would at least identify things that may be missing or things that should be clarified, et cetera. But if we're, mm -hmm. if we're happy with just making the statement, hey, we think yeah. you should combine I, these two I don't things. have my, my maps with me, but as I looked at it, I thought that the map that the uh, uh, homeowners did, plus the city's map, the two together would, would, would cover everything. So I think, as a, and, and that would maybe make the Rehoboth homeowners the same, larger and the same size as a city. So are, you that, saying, are you saying to combine those two? Yeah, I think combine them. And so when I looked at it, uh, again, I, I thought I had mine here. The two were distinctly different. The, one, the walking map that, that's in the city over here, it has a huge amount of information about the city, wa walking, places to eat, a variety of things I can't remember off the top of my head. But the other one was strictly um, riding the, more of the bikes. And I think to and combine... more importantly, safety aspects safety. of it. I think combining those two, you'd, I'm not sure you were able to combine it. The, the two documents are, are good, that are standalone documents. I'm not sure putting them together is going to... Well, we we, we be, might be describing different ones, Dave. I think they're total... As I recall, there's three. There's one great big okay. map with mm -hmm. all kinds of information. Right, I, right. I forget the name of that. Yeah. But then the city's also put out a smaller, like, trifold or fourfold that's smaller, that's closer in size to the smallest one that the homeowners had. I'm, I'm speaking of the two smaller ones. Oh, okay. That, that would be a manageable size and could, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you know be, I thought it'd be integrated. Yeah, I'm not familiar I, I, I that. believe that the city only has one at the moment and that is the larger, the larger one and the chief is nodding his head, yes. So currently the city only has the, the big one that is, I believe, called the city's park, parking and walking guide. Oh, I've got it. Is that the one that folds out and has the map on yeah, the back it's, of it's, it? It's, it's very big. Well, there was it. a smaller one. I, I think, I think the smaller one was discontinued some time ago. Okay, well. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so this is the parking and walking guide. Right so I think, I think what I'm hearing, though, is that the bicycle safety brochure and map should be, should be separate. This is, that's the only one that the city produces. Okay. At the, I, I at was, the yeah, I think this is too big, you know. I mean, I, I, uh, there was a, another smaller one I'd seen that, and maybe you're right, that it's been discontinued. I've got some at home. Thanks. Um, I, I don't have my materials with me today, so. Um. I think they cover two different things, right? So Rehoboth Beach map and safety tips with bikes, and then the other one's a parking and walking guide. Well, I, I will check with the city manager and see what their plans are, but and I will, I will let him know that at least this committee believes that they should remain separate if he is looking at, at combining the two. Um, any other, any comments on that? Please, Chief. 
the safety one, I just want to make sure, has the city, uh, there's been a lot of meetings back and forth, decided to take that on in print because I know the originators have contacted me about if I wanted to take it out or distribute it to the bike officers. So I just want to make sure, has the decision been made um, that they are doing it? And I know the city is, I don't, again, want to speak for people above my level, but I'm um, looking at a lot of um, QR codes and things like that in the future so they can bring it up on our smartphones. It can be the safety as well as the regular maps. Uh, yeah, that is Don't my that understanding that the city is taking it on. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to bring up uh, just a few things that we are being tasked with a few things uh, related to parking um, that the mayor and commissioners are looking at, but I'd like to um, bring up uh, very broadly, um, the mayor and commissioners are looking at parking, um, addressing any parking issues that, that there may be. Um, I th you may recall uh, at one time we did have, bear with me, I'm trying to zoom in on this and I don't know how. Maybe that's not it. Okay. Um, so we are discussing parking issues, which um, the topics are parking season, the length. Currently, it is uh, May 15th to September 15th, and there was original talk that we may go from May 1 to the end of September. Um, parking meters, the cost, the time limits, parking permits, the cost, the time limits, and the issuance of permits. Uh, right now, um, two permits are given to each household, um, and every car that is registered at the residence gets a, a parking permit. Um, and how to handle parking space requests received from various organizations. Um, the Senior Center, the Library, the Chamber of Commerce, the Historical Society, the Rehoboth Beach Main Street, and the Farmer's Market. So, <clears throat> One thing that um, in more detailed um, discussion, um, we've been asked to address the challenges caused by general congestion and delivery vehicles and buses. And again, I think our response to that is, well, we can't do it without a comprehensive study. Um, also, for us to start thinking about the inner city transit shuttles, uh, these are the low speed vehicles that, um, that um, the hotels have, um, you know, the little, I don't know, big golf carts is what I would call them. They're, they're considered low speed uh, vehicles. Um, the little shuttles. Sh yeah, little shuttles. So um, do we have, and I, I would like to say that we, we used to have a parking garage task force. We also used to have a parking committee which would make recommendations. Uh, about five years ago, or maybe four or five years ago, they made a very lengthy um, list of recommendations. I think almost a couple, but probably most of them were not considered by the mayor and commissioners. Um, so. The, the mayor and commissioners are right now looking at this holistically. So do we want, and I put this on the agenda, so if we want to provide input, uh, we can. Um, and it's not something we need to talk about today. We can think about it, and I can put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Um, but I, I wanted to at least bring it up. So this committee, um, because we do not have a parking committee anymore, that we would at least have the opportunity to, to talk about it. When's it gonna be on the agenda for the commissioners? Um, it will continue to be discussed tomorrow um, at two o'clock, and I suspect 
it will continue at the next workshop meeting um, and the following regular meeting. Okay. In October. Well, I've kind of wondered if our committee was responsible for parking or not. <laughs> so we are not officially the parking committee. That's not we are been. Not, but we are the okay. closest related committee <laughs> to that. So. Um, well, well, I, I feel we can't really get into the topic right now. We probably have to put it on our agenda to speak about it later. I mean, if there's some written material we could have to help overview, to read so we know what the questions are. Um, we, so I, I, I will say just... Um, from my perspective, uh, just doing a recap of this year, right? We changed, um, last year we changed to 12 hour uh, limits, except this year um, in the Grove Park parking lot was three hours, but it, every other area in Rehoboth was 12. This is, I would say the first post pandemic year. Um, I thought we would get complaints from you know, from businesses not having that turnover, but they're the ones that asked for it and demanded it. We changed it, and there's been no complaint. So I, I'd say that has been successful. Um, and we went from $3 an hour citywide. I've not heard any complaints. This Chamber of Commerce has not heard um, a very many complaints. And we changed the parking season to start May 15th to September 15th. And again, no complaints. So I, I would say that the changes we made have been successful. Um, and I don't know that I would want to recommend making any other changes until we have a study done. And the first thing you mentioned, you say that the, the time limit at the parking space has changed from four hours to two hours? Or what was that change? 12 hours. It's, it's basically unlimited now. OK, for all. Like it had been uh, to create turnover, they'd reduced it to like three or four hours at, on Rehoboth Avenue, but they did away with all we that. We did away with that. I, okay. I think it was last year or the year before. Okay. Hmm? Oh. I mean, we can just, we can leave it as is and have no comment, and, and that makes my life easier. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I think the last two things that you mentioned, which was the, um, the general congestion, delivery vehicle, and buses, like that's been, we should probably continue to discuss that. We have been. So if we should be part of that discussion, I think it might be a good idea. And also the inner city transit shuttles that yep. might be relevant to our committee. Yeah, I, I, for those two, those two things. So right now, we have absolutely nothing in the code about that. Uh, absolutely nothing. Um, and um, I don't know if it's in the code or not, but the, the practice is that all buses are supposed to drop off at the convention center parking lot here. Um, that doesn't always happen. Um, and there in the past, I actually thought that there was a fee imposed for each bus drop off, but apparently there is not. Um, that's all, also something that had been um, considered in the past um, because when people you know, drop off a bus for a day, they're utilizing the bathrooms, the garbage, the lifeguards, um, but not, not paying for the parking, which is, you know, I think a long time ago when we instituted um, uh, parking being a revenue base, it was it was considered well. Do we do we charge a lot for parking or do we have a beach pass? But you can't. You got to have something that controls the number of people um, and how they, how they get to the city. So uh, that's just food for thought. Um, I, I do think that those two topics, the bus and the inner city shuttles, um, we need to talk more about. And As for the other parking topics, I, I'm just not sure that I personally am prepared to, to want to make recommendations um, without having more data 
I would hope we were not going to change the length of the time of the parking again. And I would, I'd seen some discussion, possibly May 1st to September, right? Uh, that was certainly talked about last year, um, and a compromise was going with the 15th to the 15th as let's do that and, and see how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think we wouldn't want to change it again so soon. Like, and I concur that having more data on these things would be better. And yeah, in the absence of that, I, I don't see how we can really say a whole lot. All right, so for the future, uh, we will talk about the intracity transit um, and buses. Agreed? Yes. Anyth anything from the public? Carolyn Diefendorfer, city resident. I just have, is, so is tomorrow not a voting meeting? They won't make any final decisions? Ab uh, yeah, absolutely not, no. Okay. Um, it, it, tomorrow is a voting meeting, but there is there's nothing um, yeah, it's only listed to discuss. Okay, and we, there's no formal proposal in front of us. That, so there's a rumor going around, um, and this came from the parking attendant at the Deauville parking lot, that citywide parking was going to go to $5 an hour, and that they were going to raise the rates at Deauville from $20 to $30 a day. That's a 67% increase in fees, which to me is insane right now. With It is, this is the first time that I've ever heard of it. So, so it has not be been something that, that was discussed. Tomorrow, you'll be prepared because that some friends of ours went there last weekend and that's what they were told. So um, I will pass that information yeah. along to and the as, city manager. And as for the like changing, I'd be curious as to how much was spent on the stickers that had to go around town and put on the signs. You know, because if you're going to change the timing, you got to do the, redo all those stickers to change the dates on the sign. Yeah, I, I can say that yeah. right now there is nothing formal okay. being considered. Okay. This all is right. just general discussion, throwing out ideas, okay. et cetera. Very good. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And it gets confusing to people if you change them every year. You know, I think you change, make some major changes. You give it a couple years, see how it works. And I think what they did this past year were big changes. And the... Um, Parking yeah. space requests by the act's way too political. I think we completely stay out of that. I, I, <laughs> I, I agree. I'll, I'll just give you. I'll, I will give you a little bit of background on that. Um, so the the public library, I think, gets four spots um, behind their building and two spots in the Martin Lawn um, parking lot. The Henlopen Senior Center gets use the use of that Martin's Lawn parking lot from nine to four every day, um, just Monday through Friday. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce, I think, gets two or three spots in that um, uh, Grove Park parking lot. The Historical Society gets, I think, four hang tags for when visitors are there, they can put it in their car and not pay. And I think Main Street gets two hang tags um, so they don't have to pay. And then on Tuesdays during the farmer's market, that lot is not enforced at all. Um, so just a little background on on each of those things. And I agree, I, I don't think we want to take a position on it. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, future agenda items, buses, intracity, um, shuttles, anything else that we can think of? Chief, anything that you can think of that has, has come up? Nothing that I can think of that's come up. I do have comments uh, next month or our next meeting to talk about the uh, buses and the transient. Okay. Well, Hoyt brought up, Hoyt Decker brought up the 20 miles per hour speed limit. That might be something we could discuss. Uh, we, we certainly can. Again, I'm hoping that that's part of a traffic study, a traffic study yeah. with, with input from experts. But I'm more than happy to talk about it. The, um, the other thing that I will bring up, I was just asked um, by a gentleman that lives on Pennsylvania Avenue. 
um, that we put a silent police spin at the end of, um, at the crosswalk um, at Pennsylvania and Surf. There currently is one um, at Oak and Surf. And um, I did go down there and Pennsylvania is right after the, it turns where Lake turns to Surf. Um, I did sit there for a little bit and, and cars do fly around there and, and or do not consider the side, the crosswalk at all. So I think that request is probably valid. Um, so I'll bring that up at the next meeting. Anything else? Is there right. a crosswalk at Lake there or no, there's not. When it bends, when it, there is. There is, okay. yeah. There's definitely one going across surf, but there's also one going across lake, yeah. Um, any other comments uh, from the committee members before I go to the public one last time? Public? Walter Birmingham on 23 and Lincoln Avenue. I like to see some consideration of enforcement of the seatbelts on the shuttle vehicles from some of the hotel motels. Because it's a very scary situation. I've seen the results of them when a car hits one of those little vehicles. Uh, some of them sporting license plates and some of them not. I'm not concerned about that but the people need to be contained in them. So when they're hit, they're better off to stay with the vehicle rather than being thrown out into the street because those people coming and going to the beach don't wear helmets. Um, separately, I was helping Bill from the city's technical department with a sign and a conversation came up and I did not know about it, but maybe the rest of you may or may not know, but here goes that apparently there is a contract out or about to be out for a marking of all the signs in the city with GPS locations so that um, they'll know where and, and barcodes to know an inventory of signs. You familiar with that, Chief? And um, the other thing that I am passionate about, and I think it's absolutely disgusting, and we brought it up here and it doesn't, you can't get it past the mayor and the, and the city manager has not wanted to talk about it, is that in my opinion, walking down the streets, um, Henlope and Columbia, over here in the parking lot, 50% of the work vehicles have no parking permits. Nobody cares. The attitude of the parking division, they're told, I don't think it's actually a policy but the people riding the bicycles, et cetera, well, if it appears that they're working there, they don't need a permit. And that's not what the law says, right, Donna? You need a parking permit. I'm In season, you need a parking permit. I think it's a tremendous loss of revenue, just huge. How much is a parking permit, Mr. Chairman? $250, 230 250 250 yeah. And yeah. 50% of the vehicles don't have it. I, I, this is the last day of parking permit. The city lot, I don't know when this expires, maybe the end of the month, but so many of these workers over here parking in the city lot, they don't have permits. And these people are drawing down big bucks. You talk about- but, Walter, we don't accept parking permits in the city lot. You have to pay the kiosk. They don't, how do, they don't have to pay. There is no enforcement. And throughout the city, whether it be Henlopen or Columbia, if, if it's a, excuse me, not a McGee truck, excuse me, a service truck, they don't ticket them. Huge. I, I, I'll have a conversation with the city manager about it. I, I'm not aware of, it's certainly not a so policy. Beforehand, that's the problem under citizen comment. Nobody goes back and checks those things. And I'll, I'll just give you an example. I'm not picking. The little park out there where you turn to go to Rehoboth Elementary School, I asked how much does it cost to have Spazzato go out there? We don't know to be determined. Beforehand, it was grass. We didn't have to pay a thing. And, and the state cut the grass out there. But 
nothing comes back from the city, and that's not your fault here, but well, nothing I, comes if, back from if, the citizen comment. If I said I'm going to follow up, I, I will but follow following up. Following up also means bringing it back and informing the venue from which it was said to what the answer was. I, and I will do that. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Carolyn Diefendorfer, um, if, if you guys are going to talk about silent policemen, I personally believe they should be, like, down King Charles the rest of the way. We, we got the one at Newcastle, but now that it's getting darker earlier, you know, I, I was walking, um, walking the dog the other night. You can't see where the cross streets are when you're coming down except where there's the silent policemen because they have the reflectors on them. So from a safety standpoint, mm -hmm. I think they should, I personally think they should be at all intersections so that people driving can see where you might have pedestrians crossing. The other thing that might get, might, you guys might want to consider is, and I think you would only need three, sign coming into the city saying, you know, welcome to the city of Rehoboth. Citywide speed limit, unless otherwise posted, and have whatever it is, head in parking only. Because the one issue that I hear a lot of complaints about are people getting tickets for backing in. They don't realize, and I know it says it on the kiosk, and uh, I'm told that if you go on the parking app, you see it. But people don't realize that you can only do head in because we don't have front license plates in Delaware. If they have a front license plate, they think they're okay. So I know that's one thing I've heard complaints about. And if I see somebody backing in, I'll tell them they need to turn around. And most people are appreciative, and every once in a while you get somebody who gives you a snide remark for trying to help them. But um, I think it would be nice to have a welcome sign and again, I think you would only need three, one at the Avenue, one on State Road, and one on Bayard to say, you know, some of the, the citywide items. I'll, I'll, um, I will, I'll make it so that we can discuss that, but I'm also just gonna make that suggestion to the chief and public works director and city manager um, and see what, what they think about it. Um, thank you very much, Carolyn. Anything else, any other comments? Um, our next meeting, just, am I forgetting anything? Nope. Um, our next meeting is October 20th at 2 p.m. Uh, with that, I'm going to adjourn the meeting at 3.12. Oh, uh, yep. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.